Today, I'm gonna to look at how you can use Google Maps for better landscape photography planning. So in my most recent landscape photography newsletter, I shared with my subscribers a way to use Google Maps to help with your landscape photography trip planning. If you're not subscribed to my newsletter, I'll include a link down below. It's just a bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about various landscape photography topics. But with that said, there's some features in Google Maps that you may not be familiar with. And I get it, you're thinking, well, I already use Google Maps, I'm pretty good with it. I put in my destination, I put in my starting point, and it tells me how to get there. But there's actually a few cool things you can do with Google Maps to help plan your trips. For example, when I'm planning a trip to a new location, I usually start by heading to the internet and doing some searches or checking out national park websites or state park websites. And what I'm looking for is just names of interesting locations. But I want a way to sort of note those locations because as I'm going through, I'm usually researching sort of quickly and I'm more about gathering a list of locations that I'll then go back through and sort of study, research a little more before I start really planning which spots I'm going to and when. So I need a way to record those spots. And in the past, I've talked about it in one of my photography trip planning webinars, I used a Google spreadsheet and I would have a sheet with the name of the location, some notes about it, it's GPS coordinates if I had them. And I used that to sort of plan things. But that tactic always sort of left it hard to tell, is this place close to this place or is it far away or what's near a particular spot? Things like that. So I've started using a feature in Google Maps that lets you save your own sort of custom map. And so what I'll do is I'll create my own map. And as I read about these places, even if it's just a quick mention of it and a little photo of a waterfall, and I'm like, oh, I should make a note of that. I will find this location on the map, add it to my saved map. And then what I end up with is a whole variety of locations I can look at. And it's super helpful because it gives me a visual representation of how close things are to each other. The other thing I can do with this map is if you're going to a new location, a lot of times you might want to make notes of, hey, someone said that restaurant was good, or there's a grocery store over here, or any number of little, you know, coffee shops. Maybe you want that coffee in the morning and you want some interesting places to visit and see. And as you're doing your research, you stumble across some interesting names. I also include locations like that on my map. And then, of course, you always got to have a place to stay. For me, a lot of times when I'm scouting, I'm going to be camping, things like that. So I can make note of certain campgrounds. Again, just so that when I sort of start to really formalize my trip plans, I have a really easy reference to particular places I've read about and things like that. And I use Google Maps for that, and it's really made things really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Google Maps. I am going to first show you sort of a map that I'm in progress of making so you can sort of see why I'm telling you about this and sort of show you some high-level features of what this map can do for you and why I find it useful. And then we'll do a quick sample, and we'll create our own map from scratch with a couple different layers, and we'll put a couple locations on them just to sort of see what the process looks like and you can apply it to your own photography trip planning. So with that, let's head into Google Maps. So here we are in Google Maps and this is going to be the overview of what sort of a near complete map looks like. And what I've been doing is I've been planning a trip to New River Gorge in West Virginia just to sort of do some scouting. So I've been making a list of locations, restaurants, camping, and things like that. So we're going to start sort of a little backwards. I'm going to show you sort of what the end result can be and then I'll show you sort of how to create your own map from there. So to do this, I am inside uh, Google Maps. So I just went to maps.google.com and here I am. And over here at the upper left, we've got the little option menu. So we're gonna click that. We're gonna go to saved. And this is just how I access the map when I'm on my computer. And just one important note that you do need to be in a desktop browser in order to create and edit these maps. You can use them on your phone, which we will take a quick look at. But in order to actually create them, edit them, you do need to be on a web browser, which is why we're starting there. Anyways, we're in maps.google.com. We're going to go to saved. We've got a set of menus here. We've got list labeled visited. We're going to go to maps. And as you can see right here, I have a set of maps saved. And if I click this top one here, it's New River Gorge. I can click it and it shows me, you can see I just sort of zoomed in and you can see I've got over here on the left, I've got three layers. I've got a layers for photo locations. So essentially places that I wanna go photograph and visit potentially. You can see I have a whole bunch on here. Through here, I have a layer called camping. So I can turn these layers off and on just like in Photoshop, it works just like that. Right now I have all my layers on. So if I can see my photo locations, I can see my camping locations that I've looked at and in restaurants. And I've got all of these over here. And as you can see, let's zoom into this map just a little bit. So if we come in here and take a look, we can see some of these icons that I've got here. I've got camping locations over here. I've got the food locations over here in Fayetteville, West Virginia. And then we've got photo places over here like this. And if we scroll around the map, we can see I've got some more places up here. 
a couple more photo locations and everything like that. So it makes it real handy to sort of see at a glance where things are, what's on the map, what's close by. So if I'm going to one location, let's see. So if I'm coming over here to Long Point Overlook, right here, we can see over this way, there is a waterfall, Wolf Creek Falls. So like I said, super easy to get context and where things are. Now these are layers. So if we come back here and come back, I can turn layers off and on. So if I don't want to see all these food places on here, I can uncheck restaurants and you can see they just disappeared from this part of the screen, bring them back. And there we are, possible restaurants to eat at in the evenings in this particular town in West Virginia. If I only want to see camping because I'm, you know, it's time to find camping, I don't want to have to look over anything else. I can uncheck restaurants and photo locations. And there we've got my camping locations that I can choose from. That's why I use this particular map. Let's turn photo locations back on. So with photo locations back on, I can also make notes about these locations. So like I said, a lot of times I'm doing some quick reading. So I've got a location name. Maybe I'll see a note that the place is good for sunrises or sunsets or it's a hard hike or anything like that. So let's take Beauty Mountain Overlook over here and come over here, get on my pen. And you can see I've made some notes. It talks about an overlook. Looks like it might possibly be better for sunset and that the location is cliff overlooks, pretty easy access and a two thirds mile trail with multiple overlooks along the way. So I've been able to make some notes. I could do that with restaurants. I could do that with camping, all those things I could put in here. Now, one more thing to show on this map, just again, sort of showing you the finished result and then we'll jump into how to use one is over here on photo locations. So I've talked about how I'm usually when I'm researching this, just putting down any old location. Now, sometimes you're not gonna be able to visit all the locations because of the timing, or sometimes you're gonna have a priority of what locations you want. Well, when I created this map, I'm able to color code my pins. So for photo locations, I default to blue, and I show blue pins for those particular locations. For things that I'm gonna potentially prioritize or that are looking more interesting to me, I change the color to green. So I can look at this list and quickly see I've got green, I've got blue, and maybe you could put yellow in here for maybe an in-between. But it's just, again, a really quick and easy way to organize a map, keep some notes about it, and be able to find them relatively quickly when you're out on site, because again, you can access these from your phone. So that's the map overview. Let's talk about how to create this. So there's two ways to get there. You can get there like we did before, which was, you know, get the menu option, go to the saved icon, go to maps, and then click this open my maps icon. Or you can just go to mymaps.google.com and it'll redirect you to the place where you can create and edit these maps. Now I came into a new browser profile here, so there are no maps here in this particular instance. But if you had maps here, it would show you these saved maps and then you can open them and edit them. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do create a new map. We're gonna say create, and it's gonna create this map. First thing I'm gonna do is name this map. We'll call it, we'll call this New River Gorge. I can put in a description, demonstration for video. We'll save that map. And my first layer is untitled layer. Now, because I'm a photographer, I'm typically gonna rename this right away to photography locations. I'm gonna add a layer and we are going to do camping. You could do hotels. You can name this layer, whatever you want. I'm gonna call this one camping. And then sometimes it's nice to get a bite to eat. So we'll call this one restaurants. I could call it restaurants, coffee shops, anything I wanna call it. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and just sort of hit some of the spots here in West Virginia. And I'm not gonna populate this whole map. I'm gonna give you a couple ideas to sort of show you how it works. So for example, so for example, say we wanna see Cathedral Falls. It's a waterfall that's down in the area. I can start searching Cathedral Falls. It takes me right there to the pen. I'm gonna add it to the map and it has added it to the photography locations. Now, if it happens to add it to the wrong layer, you need to move it to a layer, you can just drag it to the layer that you want it on and be good. Now, like I said, it defaults to blue. Since this is the one I'm doing most, I sort of accept the default color. I do sometimes like to change the icon and I can just tap that color and there's a little camera icon here just to change the icon. You don't have to change it. You can just go with the default. I do find the color super helpful. The icons is something a little extra. And then if I wanna edit, I can rename this. So if it doesn't like the name I pinned it as, or I wanna call it out more specifically, I can edit the name up here, or I can add a description. So roadside waterfall, and I'll save it. And there we go, we've got our first particular pin. 
Uh, let's see, another place that's out there is called Diamond Point. Let's put that in, Diamond Point Overlook. Google finds it. There it is. I'm gonna add it to map. Keep it blue, because I like the default. I'm gonna change the camera icon over to that. And just for fun, we'll say another possible overlook. And now you can see, I've got a couple different options over here. We talked earlier about if I wanna color code it or anything like that. Say I'm not a huge fan of Diamond Point Overlook, but I'm interested in doing Cathedral Falls. I can come in here, change its color to green. And now on my list, as you can see, I've got green and I've got blue. Let's zoom out this map a little bit. So we got Cathedral Falls sitting right here and then Diamond is down this way, all the way down here. But this is why it's sort of handy is because New River Gorge is sort of a spread out park along the river, it sort of follows along. So one point may not be very close to another point. So if I'm out exploring and I'm down at Diamond Point Overlook and I want to see what's nearby because I don't want to drive all the way up to Cathedral Falls, I just don't think it's a good use of time, I can easily take a look at this map and see what else is close by. Okay, so let's jump in here and let's real quickly show a different layer. So here we are on the camping layer. So let's say we want to find some camping. I'm not real sure I want to go maybe, so I just search for camping. Oh, here we go. Here's the outpost, New River Gorge Campground. Toss that. I'm going to add it to the map. It's right here outside of town a little bit. And change the color over here to brown for camping. I believe there's like a tent somewhere. More icons looking for the tent. There's the tent icon. Okay. If I wanted to, I could make notes about it right here underneath the description. And now I've got a camping layer. And real quick, let's do the same for restaurants. Let's click on this layer. Let's do restaurant. Actually, let's do pies and pints. Pies and pints in Fayetteville. That's, this one always comes highly recommended up there. So we're just gonna add it to map. We are going to change its color and we'll call it orange and put the food knife and fork on it. And there we go. And now I've got pies and pints on it. So like I said, if I mistakenly put something somewhere, I can move the outpost down to restaurants. If it was a restaurant, I can move it down there. Changes the layers it's on. Move it back up here. And now I've got it back in camping. You can add more layers. I tend to do these three layers, but maybe you're looking for something else. Maybe there's some other feature that you want included on your map. This is where you can do it. You can add a layer and add it through that. But what I like is it lets me go through this pretty quickly, add lots of pins, and then end up with a map that sort of looks more like this bigger one that I've spent more time on and just get a feel for where everything's at. And why I've really come to prefer this over a spreadsheet is that it sort of lets me see exactly where it's at on the map, gives me the context of location, and because it lets me edit the description, it gives me a way to make those notes. So if I'm going back through here while I'm getting a little closer to planning for the trip, I can come in here and start clicking on things and see what my notes are. So I click on Cathedral Falls. Oh yeah, roadside waterfall. That'd be nice and easy to access. Or Diamond Point Overlook. Oh, another possible overlook. A lot of times I will note good sunrise spot, good sunset spot, or long trail, or easy trail, or steep trail to get to these particular points. Super handy. So I can do all this planning for my desktop while I've got my web browser. I can have multiple tabs open. I can mark them on the map and I know I won't lose track of anything. Now, once I've got this map done, I can access it on my phone, which is super handy for when I'm out down there driving around and things like that. So let's take a look at how to access it on the phone once you've created the map. Okay, so, okay, so let's look at how to access this map on your phone because when you're out and about, the phone will show you where you're at and you can look to see what's near you on the map to go visit based on what you've set up in your saved map. I am using an iPhone as well, but once you're on Google Maps, it should be pretty similar. Okay, so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna click on Google Maps. And once you're in Google Maps, you can come down to this U section down here at the bottom. It's the very bottom. You've got Explore, you've got U, you've got Contribute. We're gonna go to U. We're gonna scroll down just a little bit and here's this Maps icon. This is gonna load the maps we have. Now this is on my account that had multiple maps on it. This is the more populated New River Gorge map. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. And it zips right in there. As you can see, I can scroll around. I can see where things are at. And if this phone was actually in this location, it would show me where I am at. And then I can see these locations that are close. So for example, it can be real handy to come in here and say I'm at 
long point overlook. And I'm like, well, what is near me? What, what do I want to do? And I can try to decide, do I want to go eat? Well, there's lots of places to eat over here. And I can look at some of my favorites that I've already looked at. So I'm not in the area with minimal connectivity trying to figure things out. I can know what I've sort of thought about before. Or I'm like, oh, I got time for one more overlook. I could zip down here to Diamond Point Overlook and take a look at it. So super handy if you want to see the legend because maybe you want to toggle some things off and on. Maybe you've got a lot of stuff going on. There's campgrounds, there's restaurants and, and sites. You can do view map legend and we can toggle things off here and there. And that's how it works on my phone. Pretty handy. Like I said, I found it to be a very good planning tool and helpful for that purpose, as well as being handy once you're out in the field with the map. Now, let's just talk about one more thing. You can share this map. And I have done this before when planning a trip with somebody else where I want them to see some of the locations I'm marking. You can take the map you've used and you can share it with somebody. Now, I do want to caution you about that. In this particular example, I've only have marked places that are known tourist attractions. These are overlooks that have infrastructure support. None of these are hidden little spots or anything where I found some reference in some form and the infrastructure can't support it. Because you really do want to be careful about what you share online so that your some of your favorite places don't get overrun or damaged because the infrastructure can't support it. So if you're sharing a map, be sure you trust who you're sharing it to or be very careful if you have any kind of sensitive locations on it. You do want to be careful with that when sharing anytime, not when just sharing these Google Maps or anything like that but location sharing and should you do it or should you not it's a whole other topic and we can cover that some other time so but that's really all there is to it let's wrap this video up Okay, so that's how you can use some of the Google Maps features to make your trip planning easier. Now, one more thing to call out before we wrap this up, and that is I typically use this method to plan my photography trips because I'm usually, where am I driving to? Am I driving to this trailhead or am I going to this overlook or something like that? For my hiking, and once I start to head down the trail or anything like that, I actually rely on Gaia GPS for most of that. That's where I handle my tracks and things. We can do a video on Gaia in the future, but this is really more of my planning tool for or when I might be on some back road or something like that and want to know what locations are close. It's not necessarily my hiking tool or the one I would use to keep track of where I'm at actually on a hike. So that's how I found using some of these Google Maps features for my landscape photography trip planning helpful. Hopefully it helps you as well. If you did, be sure to hit the like button on this video. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, and mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.